What's up guys? This video is the three best tips to build a great set of shoulders. Oh, that being said, there is no perfect workout. Everybody is a little bit different. So there are certain principles that are gonna work. So there's no perfect set of exercises. There's no perfect rep scheme. It's something that is gonna be a little bit more individual to you. So certain people are gonna respond better to certain things and I'll get into the why later. But make sure you watch till the end of the video because I will give you a sample workout. And I'll explain how to adapt that to your own needs. So, the number one tip to get great shoulders is you have to keep your shoulders healthy. So, how do we do that and why are the shoulders typically not healthy? Well, I mean, first off, if you're working out and you're trying to get a great chest and all those things, we're, we're putting a lot of strain in the shoulders doing a lot of different activities. Um, you know, if you're bench pressing a lot, bench pressing heavy, doing heavy flies, dips, those type of things, they're putting a lot of strain in the shoulders. And then when we train shoulders, they already have a lot of strain and then we may not be working enough flexibility to optimize your range of motion in the shoulders either. So those, those few things uh, just will really add up to a lot of wear and tear in the shoulder joint. So how can you improve upon that? Well, your training split, um, the way you set up your training split is important. So you don't wanna hit a shoulder day right after the day after, or even like two days after hitting chest. You want it to be on a different part of the week. So let's say if I hit chest early in the week, I'm gonna hit shoulders late in the week, right? So that's, that's a start. Next, you maintaining shoulder health. You obviously want to make sure you're training the back of your shoulders, your posterior delts. So, we are typically imbalanced. We're gonna have stronger anterior delts or the front of our shoulders and weaker on the posterior side. So we always want to have a little bit of, a little bit more training for the posterior delts because it's typically a weaker muscle group. So training the weaker muscle group first early in the workout and a little bit harder. So tip number two is you want to train your, your shoulders with a lot of isolation movements. And the reason being is they're gonna respond really well to isolation movements because the shoulders are a muscle group that has a lot of range of motion. They can work in a lot of different angles. Now, you do want some compound movements in there like one to two good pressing movements in a workout. That's it. And, or maybe like an upright row would be another good compound movement. Now, there's debates on the uh, upright row. A lot of um, physical therapists and a lot of um, coaches in general say the upright row is not good for the shoulders. Now, I think that depends on a few things like the exercise performance. And um, for instance, if you are performing the upright row with cables, you're able to position a little bit differently to where you're not putting as much load on the internal rotation. So the, the negative part of the upright row is obviously placing too much, um, placing a load uh, on an internally rotated shoulder, which is typically a recipe for disaster for the shoulder, especially if you have any pre-existing issues. But again, it comes down to performance of movement. So as far as compound movements, you're, you don't need a ton of compound movements for your shoulders. You just need one good one for a mass builder and then the rest of your shoulder work should be isolation. So different varieties of lateral raises, different varieties of reverse flies and a little bit, very little front raises. You don't need to do a lot in the front raising. In fact, as for front raises, I rarely do them by themselves. It usually be a combo to where I'm working not just the front of the shoulder but also the side as well. Um, so I'll show you what I'm talking about in the sample workout. The way you're isolating the shoulders is more important than the exercise selection you actually do. So making sure that you are able to perform lateral raises and reverse flies to where you're actually able to isolate those muscles. 
and the common mistake on those is just going either way too heavy or not having the mind muscle connection so getting mind muscle connection in those smaller muscle groups can be a challenge because you can go through the motions on the movement like for instance a lateral raise a lateral raise is literally raising your arm up to the side but if you're just raising your arm up to the side with the dumbbell in your hand, you're probably not really working much of the side of the shoulder. So we have to think a little deeper than that, what that muscle function actually is. So when we raise the arm up to the side, if the shoulder shrugs up and the shoulder comes in, so let's imagine I'm, my shoulders are shrugging and my shoulders are pulling, the, pulling towards each other, the scapular pulling towards each other, right? The muscles that are doing most of the work are gonna be the muscles in the upper back, the trapezius and the rhomboids. So those muscles can take over the movement very easily whether you're doing a reverse fly or you're doing a lateral raise. So the, the best cue for that is don't lift your arms up, push your elbows apart. So push your arms apart. Always lead with the elbows, tilt your thumbs down a little bit, make sure you're leading with the elbows and push your elbows away from your body. Okay, just think like you're trying to push your elbows towards the opposing walls. So if you, if you do that a few times without weight in your hand, do that without weight in your hand right now, push your elbows apart and make sure you're keeping your shoulders depressed as in your shoulders aren't shrugging at all. There's no shrugging movement. Once they shrug, your, your traps are taking over the movement, you're gonna feel that burning in your traps and your neck and once you feel that, like that means you're not doing the exercise right. Uh, you should feel it primarily on, in, on your uh, medial delt, on the side of your shoulder. That's exactly where you wanna feel it and that's the only place you wanna feel it. You do not want to be working your traps uh, because it's not an effective trap exercise. It's just going to get them burning a little bit. It's not effective to build your traps anyway, but they're not getting much enough work to simulate the medial delt if you're allowing your traps to take over the movement. That's uh, tip number two, isolate. Tip number three and the last one is shoulders can take a beating. So, and what I mean by that is you can really work the hell out of your shoulders and you really need to uh, to get them to grow. So whether it's heavy weight or high volume, and you can do these in a lot of different ways, time under tension, you can, you'll notice like once your shoulders start burning, they'll, they'll hit fatigue pretty quickly, you know, after a bunch of sets of lateral raises, they'll hit fatigue and they'll get weaker during the workout, but you can work the hell out of them, they won't get as sore. So for to get them to grow, there's a, a lot, a plethora of different techniques to increase intensity. Uh, pyramid training works really well for, sh for shoulders. German volume training, those um, techniques where we're able to stack in a lot of volume into a shorter amount of time, upping that intensity, you know, decreasing that rest period. So there's a lot of different techniques that can help you jack that intensity up and get the intensity where you want it to be. But the key is really make sure you keep your intensity for shoulder training up because it is a muscle group that does require quite a bit of intensity to see the results that you want. So number one, obviously stay healthy. Number two, make sure you're isolating and you have your mind-muscle connection in the muscle group properly. And number three, make sure your intensity is up there. So I hope that helps you out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and we'll see you guys in the next. So the first exercise is gonna be the cable reverse fly. You can use any type of reverse fly. You can use dumbbells, you can use the reverse pec deck. The important thing is, again, we're leading with the elbows and pushing the arms apart, not just pulling back, but pushing the arms apart to activate that posterior delt. You wanna make sure you feel it right in the back of your shoulder. Again, it's important to start with these and get plenty of volume on posterior delts because they are typically the weakest link in your shoulders. It's also going to help with shoulder health if you train them correctly. Next up, we're hitting isolation for the medial delt, the side of the shoulder. And we're using a dumbbell lateral raise. Although you can use cables, you can use a uh, lateral raise machine to perform this movement. But the important thing again is pushing apart, pushing away from the body, and not shrugging the shoulders so we don't activate the traps.
For the pressing movement, I'm going to be doing a pyramid set on a military press here. So the pyramid set, we would start light with either the bar or a five or 10 pound on each side. So in this video, I'm using tens and you're adding each set. So you want to try and complete eight to 12 repetitions. And once you get to a weight where you cannot no longer complete eight repetitions, then that would be the maximum weight you're going to go to. So let's say I went up to five tens here and then you can knock out a couple working sets at the heaviest weight if possible, if you're still able to get eight reps and then start stripping it off. So for the pyramid sets, basically one long set. So you wanna have minimal rest in between. So it's gonna stay fairly light. Now you could do this on a shoulder press machine. You can use dumbbells. You can use a Smith machine. If you don't have a great shoulder range of motion, seated presses will give you a little bit of advantage because you don't have to get back as far and it's also not gonna be as challenging a movement for the core. I'm just using the barbell here for demonstration. But you can use any type of pressing movement for this. We're gonna finish the workout with the plate raise combo. So I'm rotating the plate to the left and then to the right, and then around the head to the left and to the right. So this is great. We are targeting the anterior delts, but you will hit the lateral as well. It's a great exercise to promote shoulder function 